Hey all you concreters out there in Crete land, it's Friday, it's time for another version of 10 and 10, where I answer 10 of your questions in 10 minutes or less. Now these questions were asked either on my website, everythingaboutconcrete.com, through an email, or on my YouTube channel, Mike Day, Everything About Concrete. Now if you've got a question you want me to answer, go ahead down there in the comments, leave a question, and I'll put that on another version of 10 and 10. Now, if this is your first time watching me, my company, Days Concrete Floors, specializes in installing concrete floors, slabs, pool decks, stamp concrete, we stain concrete, we're a decorative concrete company, we install epoxy floors, we do all kinds of concrete repair. So if any of that kind of stuff interests you, go ahead on down there and hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell notification. I come out with two to three videos a week about all that kind of stuff trying to help you guys, trying to teach you guys. Whatever you guys need to know is I'm here to help. So go ahead down there and ask a question. Let me know what it is you want to learn about the most, and I'll do whatever I can to help you. Speaking of helping you guys, make sure you watch the whole video. At the end of this video, I'm going to reveal a very special offer for you guys, something I want to do just for you guys for watching the whole video. All right, guys, let's get right to it. I'm going to try to answer 10 of your questions in 10 minutes or less. Now when I answer a question and I come up with a solution, if there's a product involved for that solution, then there'll be a link for that down in the description. So any of these products I recommend, I use guys in my own business. So I've tried them, they work really good for me, and that's why I'm recommending them. If I don't use them, I wouldn't recommend them to you guys. So um, ho hopefully you can put your trust in me to know that these products are gonna work good for you. All right, let's get to the first question. Can I pour a new two inch thick concrete floor over my old rough existing concrete floor? Yes. So here's what you gotta do. Here's what we do. First of all, we'll go in there and, and we'll clean the floor. We'll make sure it's all sound. Get off any loose concrete or dirt or dust or grime or whatever we gotta do. We either pressure wash it or we, if it's smooth enough, we'll just vacuum it real good. But usually we'll pressure wash it if it's rough. And then when it dries, like the next day, what we'll do is we'll put down this product called Weldcrete. And what that does is it bonds the two floors together. Whenever, a, whenever I cap over an existing concrete floor with another one that's three inches or less, I like to bond them together. So we use this product called Weldcrete. Comes in a one gallon can, comes in a five gallon can. It's just a single component product. So it's kind of like rolling down paint. Uh, and that's how we do it. We just dump some on the floor. We'll either scrub brush it in or we'll, we'll use a roller and we'll roll it in. And then we let it dry. And then within 24 hours, we'll come back and we'll pour the concrete floor right over it. And that bonds them together. Question two. How thick should my cement slab be for a basement floor? Well, I'll, I can tell you what we do when we pour off basement floors is we generally make them four inches thick. Uh, I guess you could go three and a half. I guess you could go five or six if you wanted to, but general rule of thumb is four inches thick is all you need for a basement floor. Question number three. Is a vapor barrier recommended under a new concrete floor or a concrete slab? Yes. The simple answer to that is yes. And why? Well, a vapor barrier, you know, a good vapor barrier, whether it's 10 mil or 15 mil thick, is going to help prevent any moisture vapor from coming up through the concrete from the sub base. If you have moisture coming up through your floor, that could lead to a whole bunch of other problems, especially if you go put any type of flooring down. But it's, a vapor barrier is going to help prevent that, so I would definitely recommend putting a vapor barrier down. I'll have a link down in the description to one of the vapor barriers I recommend. Question number four. We bought a home with a shiny white poured concrete floor. I've tried every product known to man, even white vinegar, to clean them. But there's always a film after I clean, making them look dull. Any suggestions? Well, one suggestion would be not to use vinegar on a concrete floor. That's just going to etch it. Um, I suppose you could really dilute it like nine to one, but there's better products out there for that. The reason you have a dull, dry film on the floor is when you put just put water on the floor to clean with, 
the, if you, especially if you have hard water, the minerals from the water, um, some of them get left on the floor. And after it dries, it just leaves that, that dull looking kind of look to the floor, the matte look. So what I recommend is a product from Misco, M-I-S-C-O. It's called Emerald Neutral pH Floor Cleaner. And you want something, whenever you're cleaning concrete, you want something with a neutral pH. You don't want it highly acidic and you don't want it highly alkaline. And it's just gonna cause problems with your concrete floor. So you can, you can use this stuff to clean with and it doesn't leave a residue behind at all. It leaves your floor nice, clean, and shiny looking. I'll have a link for that also down in the description. Question number five. I wanna pour a new concrete slab over my existing garage slab. Do I need to jack up my garage, pour the new slab over the old one, and then set the garage down back on top of the slab? Well, yeah, that would be probably the best way to do it. Jack up the garage, form up around the old slab, whether it's two inches, three inches, four inches, however thick you're gonna go, and then pour the new slab, and then set the garage back down on top. I mean, that's a lot of work, but that would be probably the best way to do it. You could pour just a new concrete floor inside the garage without jacking it up on top of the old slab. The only thing you'll have to figure out is your door heights. You know, how, how bad is that gonna mess up your door heights? If you raise it up two inches, can you raise your garage door height up two inches? So, or any other door, maybe you have an entry door to the house that's slab height. I mean, that would probably mean you can't do it that way. You'd have to jack the, the garage up. Question number six. What's the preferred method to remove latex concrete paint from a room inside my home? It's approximately 200 square feet. I'm removing the paint so it can be tiled to match the rest of the house. Is the paint removal even necessary or is there a treatment that would allow good adhesion for the thin set and tile? Well, my recommendation would be to remove the paint. I wouldn't put tile over the paint, number one. So how do we remove the paint? There's a couple ways. Radon Seal makes a product called Lightning Strip Floor Cleaner. I'll have a link for that so you can check that out. Um, you, just, you just brush this stuff on, you let it sit for a little while, you'll see the paint start to kind of kind of wrinkle up and debond itself from the concrete and you just scrape it up and remove it and you rinse the floor off. That's probably, that's probably one of the ways I would do it. For us, the guys who do it professionally, we would just grind the paint off. So we would go in there with a, let's say a seven inch diamond grinder or maybe even a four inch, like a, like a four inch DeWalt diamond grinder, you know, has a diamond cup wheel on it. We'd have a vacuum attachment, hook that to a nice vacuum and we'd grind that paint off. Um, you can rent that stuff at Home Depot if you want. You can even rent a floor buffer at Home Depot that has a, a base for it called the Diama brush. And that's like, a, it's got diamond impregnated sandpaper on it. And that, that may even remove the paint if you didn't want to use a diamond cup wheel. It's probably going to be a little dusty, but uh, it might do it. I would highly recommend the diamond cup wheel though. Question number seven. I'm closing in my garage. I'm actually building a subfloor over the concrete, but I've been told I may need to lay Visqueen, which is plastic, over the concrete floor before adding my new subfloor. They're guessing the Visqueen was probably not laid under the original garage floor when it was poured. Is it okay to add Visqueen on top of the concrete and below my new subfloor, or will this cause me more problems? Well, number one, my first recommendation would be not to put the plastic on top of the concrete and under the new subfloor. You're going to have moisture problems at some point, whether it's a high humid type of day or you have moisture coming up through the slab that gets trapped under that plastic. And that moisture is going to end up causing mold and mildew and some pretty smelly odors. And, and then you're going to be wishing you hadn't done that. So what I would recommend is go to Radon Seal, they've got a deep penetrating concrete sealer. And what this sealer does is it penetrates two to three inches into the concrete and it blocks all the pores to the concrete. It basically waterproofs the concrete. So any moisture vapor from the sub base 
can't come up through the concrete. That's what I would recommend. Radon seal, deep penetrating concrete. It's easy, it's easy to apply. You just put it in a pump up sprayer. You spray it on two coats. Just let it absorb into the concrete. Let it soak in as much as you can. Um, and that's what's going to take care of your moisture for you. But I wouldn't put plastic on top of that, that old slab. Question eight. How do you estimate the number of concrete bags you need for a concrete floor repair? Well, that's a pretty broad question, but I do have a concrete calculator page on my website. I'll have a link for that down in the description. And all you do is plug in the dimensions, whether it's two by two, three by two, five by two, whatever the dimensions are by the thickness. And that tells you how many 80 pound bags you'll need or how many 60 pound bags you need. Um, I would definitely use that calculator. That would be the easiest way. Question number nine, I've got a new concrete floor. How can I remove the white concrete dust, which is called efflorescence, that's left after you've cleaned it and stripped it? Well, probably that efflorescence is caused by cleaning it and stripping it because you introduce water into the floor, the water soaked down into the concrete, and then when that water evaporates, it pulls the minerals and the alkali salts up out of the concrete and it just it just lays them on top of the concrete floor that white powdery stuff it's called efflorescence so how do you clean this stuff well again this company called radon seal they've got a product that's called that's an efflorescence remover and it's non-corrosive it doesn't have any odor it's safe to use it's easy to use you just you just brush it on or you spray it on you work it into the surface a little bit and then you just either wet back it up or you rinse it off and that's going to clean off that efflorescence for you. So I would definitely recommend Radon Seal's efflorescence remover. All right, last question, guys. Uh, we're a little bit over 10 minutes, but I'm pretty close. I had concrete poured in my house about six months ago and was wondering if it's dried enough to install hardwood floor over it. The simple answer to that is yes. It takes about 28 days for concrete to fully cure out and then you can put most any type of floor over it you want. If you want to be safe, again, I would highly recommend using that Radon Seal Deep Penetrating Concrete Sealer. And that's going to that's gonna block any moisture from coming up through the floor if you're worried about it. So, yes, six months is, is plenty long enough to wait before you put hardwood down. Hey guys, well that's it. That's 10 questions in hopefully 10 minutes or less on a Friday. So stay tuned for this series. I'm going to be doing them every Friday from now on. Again, if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead down there, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification. Hey guys, you remember that special offer I talked about in the beginning of the video? Well, here it is. My concrete slab course is usually $49. I'm going to give you $40 off. That's right. Just nine bucks for this course. Uh, this course is going to teach you everything you need to know about installing your own concrete slab. From the setup, the forming, the pouring, how to, how to bull float finish it, everything you need to know for nine bucks. All you need to do is the link will be in the description down below. When you click on that link, is type in the code word buggy. That's right, buggy, B U G G Y, in the coupon code section. And that'll get you your $40 off. Thanks, guys.